24. What a number for Novak Djokovic. It is something that is beyond words, Paul, but as somebody who has coached two of the greats of all time in Pete Sampras, Roger Federer, try to put this in perspective for us. Well, for me, whenever I see matches like this, I always try to put my student hat on and learn, right? And you, you see the result and you see what happens, but I always try to figure out why. You know, when you look at the numbers of what Novak's done throughout his career, they continue to just astound me. And you look at the pivotal moments. There's about seven minutes in the second set where that match totally could have been flipped on its head. And magically and away with will and expertise and experience, Novak gets through and turns that into a 6-3, 7-6, six, 6-3 three, seven, th seven, six, six, three routine match, but not really. Right. And so you try to figure out why, and I just remember I have Pete Sampras whispering in my ear, because I used to ask him all this stuff, and he used to say, you know what? Sometimes good just wins, but good doesn't beat great very much. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, wow. you know, Medvedev is very good, and he's right there to being great, but Novak is an all-time great. And maybe there's just not a why. Maybe it's just that big moment. Mm. So as much as we try to figure it out, I tell you, I used to have a full head of hair. I don't anymore <laughs> trying to figure it out. But now I just sit back and I just applaud. I mean, it is so much fun just to watch this guy do what he does. It's absolutely miraculous. Yeah, it's the conundrum for players coming up against him. It's it's the, you know, idea of how do I beat him? How do I get on top against somebody who seems to keep getting better with everything that he has accomplished, with everything that is on his resume? He still is looking for that little extra bit that he can put into play in matches under pressure. We saw him serving and volleying. We saw him coming in, the little half volleys, just finding that additional level and you wonder how far can he keep going and it just seems like it's unlimited it was unbelievable unbelievable to see that in real time to see him work through a match against a tough opponent a tough out and he gets it done once again at, at this stage in his career he's just going from peak to peak height to height and it's not something that the, the average person can even understand none of us can know what it's like to be in those shoes because quite frankly no one has been in those shoes so it's difficult for me to even talk about the tennis when you witness something like this. For me, it's really about what the mind, body, spirit, and soul can do. I mean, when you took a look at him there in the second set, in, in many ways, we, we thought he was gone. I mean, the guy was collapsing. It looks like his legs were out. And somehow he summons that more. And I, I'm not saying we need to all compare ourselves to a Novak Djokovic, because, of course, you can't. But it just kind of shows you when, when you think you're done and there's nothing left and you're able to just pull out mm. that little extra, it's... It's so much more than just about tennis. What a, what a gift that match was. Superhuman, Novak Djokovic. Yeah. 72 majors played, 36 finals, that's half of them, 24 titles. A third of the time he stepped on the court at a major, he's ended up with the trophy above his head.